What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Things and Stuff review, where we review things and stuff here on the Starch Rec Models and Props channel. Uh, this is the third time I've tried to do this thing with audio problems, so hopefully the third time's the charm. And we today are going to be looking at the Space 1999 Eagle Kit made by Imai, I-M-A-I, however you pronounce it. Um, this kit is one whatever we feel like at scale, also known as one ten, one one hundred tenth scale. Is that a scale? Is that a popular scale? I have no idea. I don't have anything in this scale. So I just assume it's a box scale with whatever they decided to pick. Um, my original intention in getting this kit was try to have a nice 5 inch eagle to go along with the uh, 12 inch and 22 inch eagles that I have, but uh, it's turned out a little bigger than I thought it was. But it's still a cute, charming kit. Uh, this is the 1981 release, and um, it was released a few years before that, and I think had a more recent release in the 2000s, uh, and that release got retooled a bit from the wacky uh, wheel gimmick that you see here. Uh, from what I've read, they got rid of that, So, uh, but we'll check out this guy. We'll check out the box first. We've got some nice images here. The cover art that's drawn, and then this looks like a um, picture of the real one from the series. You can see the rescue eagle is featured. Uh, some information in Japanese. And like I said, I've already been through this once, so, or twice actually. Hopefully this will work. So we'll start with this runner. It has the command module, which looks Line, I guess it's not perfectly accurate, but it's still neat. And it's got the main wheels, of course, because you know Eagles had uh, big wheels coming out of the cargo pod. And we got our engine bells, and then the spine, which is very, very thin plastic, and doesn't have spars that connect it across on the bottom. But like I said, this is a kit from 1981 which was repropped from a kit from, I think, even the 70s, so what do you expect? It's still neat. Uh, next we have this runner, which has uh, wheels that go in the feet, and there's the feet right there. And then we've got an axle, and then these are the bulkheads for the cargo pod and the command module and the engines, and apparently what you can do is use those and they like twist lock into each other so you could twist lock the cockpit into the engines or into the cargo pod i don't know why you want to but i guess it's added play value i guess you could do the command module to the engines and have a faux ultra probe capsule if you wanted to if you want to call it that got that and then the rest of the bag we've got our Cargo pod. I think somebody had already started building this because this kit's missing the tires. Like, I really need that. And then uh, it does have some glue on there, but I don't really, it's not going to bother me because uh, these will have to be filled in anyway with plastic. I don't know if I'll try to accurize it too much, but I'll definitely fill those in. That's the bottom side. Um, divots for where the engine bells go. Oh, wait, does it have engine bells? No, it doesn't. Well, I guess those are supposed to be the engine bells. Obviously, because it has tires. Of course it doesn't. Um, and then the inside axle places. Here's the cargo pod with um, four windows. Windows on the side instead of uh, six. This isn't a very accurate kit, but it's neat. It's quaint. And this fits together awkwardly. So that's where the bulkheads go in. So that's that guy. And then next, we've got this red runner. Because you know, you remember those eagles that were all red, right? We remember those from the show. I guess the dinky ones were all sorts of different colors. So I guess this is acceptable. Um, this wacky detailing that's not accurate at all, but it's still kind of neat. Um, and the bottoms of the command and engine modules. 
is the engine module. You can see it has the has the locking mechanism, so you can do all that fun play stuff with it. So there's that. And we have a very nicely yellowed graphics sheet with some red markings and only two black details for the eyes, whatever you want to call it, the, the viewports on the command pod. You got the little um, side thrusters. I'll probably either make new ones or just paint everything on. So that's still neat. But what do you expect also from a kit from 1980, and also one that was presumably opened? Uh, we use, here's the directions. Yeah, we got a nice view of the runners. And the first steps are doing the wheels and tires and mounting them into the thing, to the baseboard, whatever. And then assembling the cargo pod. We come over here and are assembling the front and back modules. Next we have assembling the main body. It's all very straightforward. It's not a snap together kit, as you can probably tell. That does require glue. And installing the feet and the wheels in the feet. And finally, how to play with it and install uh, graphics, decals, and all that. So. That's that guy. I'll put that back in the box. So yeah, it's a quaint little kit, for especially for its time, and you can never have too many eagles. So, I mean, really. But uh, here's a couple little comparisons. We've got the 172nd scale uh, round two re-release. Kind of get an idea of how big it is. I, like I said, I was hoping one that will probably have a total length of this, maybe a little smaller. What is, is that, about five inches-ish? And, um, yeah, but it'll be I don't know, probably about that big when it's done. So, eh, it's still cool. It'll be fun to have that. Um, obviously, completely different detailing. Of course, this isn't the most accurate thing in the world either, but eh, what are you going to do? So there's that, and then we'll compare it to one more delicious item. Only a piece of it, though. You can compare it to the 22-inch Eagle cargo pod to see how massive that thing is. Um, I got this kit for my birthday, the whole thing, and it's, oh, it's so cool. But I'm intimidated about doing some of the detail painting. I shouldn't be. It's just gray squares, but I want to make sure it's good. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do a rescue eagle or not, but... We shall see. Same with this one. I'm not sure on the paint scheme. Um, probably won't do a review on this because there's tons of those out there. Same with this. What I probably will do, though, is uh, I haven't seen one on the Deluxe Eagle um, that has all the resin parts and is the Metamorph version. So I might do one on that just to have that out there so you guys can see what the different additional parts are and stuff like that. Um, that make it worth the 50 bucks as opposed to 20 bucks for this guy. Um, speaking of the show, I just kind of became a fan of the show. I got this for my birthday, and then I started watching the, the show, and I really enjoyed season one. Now I'm on season two, and it's just, it's a difference. And I don't like things that are different. Like, they got rid of Bergman and Paul and the computer guy. I can't think of his name. Um, and they changed the music, and eh, it's weird. It's weird now. It's action adventure weird. I don't know. I liked the hard, boring science. That's so much more fun and interesting to me than generic action. I don't like that new guy, Tony. Tony uh, Gillespie, or whatever his name is. You know, the Tony guy. His name's Tony, and he has an Italian name, but he has a British accent for some reason. And the metamorph lady, eh, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I just got used to those characters. Maybe if I would grown up with it for two years instead of just binge-watching it, maybe it would have been different so since it's 2016 and i can't immerse myself in the lack of sci-fi television and internet and you know things we have today so i guess it's a different perspective oh well it's still good although i then i switched over to buck rogers in 25th century that was uh it's 
pretty much what I expected. I did love Battlestar Galactica, and I'm enjoying it enough. I've only watched three episodes of Buck Rogers so far. I love the Starfighters. Pretty cool. I want to do a studio scale of those. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be glorious, I think. Um, so, yeah, what else? That's, that's pretty much it. For, oh, one more Space 1999-related thing, or Eagle-related thing. I would highly recommend, if you guys haven't and are interested in this stuff, pick up the sci-fi and fantasy modeler modeling the eagle um, that they put out a couple months ago. Uh, there's a couple articles that they have from their other issues, but it has some new stuff, and it's really cool. Oh, the back has a glorious page of the uh, box art from the 22-inch eagle. I want a wall-sized painting picture of that, but they've got... It's not just on the 22-inch eagle. They've got uh, the... A couple of reviews on the 12-inch the Eagle. There's how to use the photo etch, how to use the resin parts on the other one, how to build the 22. Uh, uh, interviews with Brian Johnson. Um, and just, just great material. Uh, the guy who redid and owns Eagle One, the original filming model, is, is really cool. A lot of detailed information on that. So I definitely recommend picking this up. It's only like 15 bucks. Um, you can get it from Cult TV Man or eBay or any place like that. I, I'll put a link, hopefully, if I remember, in the description to order this guy. So it's, it's really awesome, 80 pages, something like that. It's just, it's just juicy. I wish there could be more books like this, like one on just the Viper, just 80 pages on the classic Viper or the Enterprise or whatever. The be so, I just, I love it so much. It's so, it's so delicious. <laughs> anyway. So there's that. Uh, another related item is, speaking of the original studio model, uh, there's a really cool video that I found recently in researching all this that the guy who owns that original studio model, um, he took this really cool video where he disassembled it and just looks at all the details. I wish he would reshoot it or has a HD copy so you can see all the detail because it came out a couple of years ago. But... I'll try to remember to put a link to that in the description, too, because it's, it's just cool to watch eight minutes of nothing but eagle gloriousness and how, like, the uh, Freon gas system worked and everything like that. It's really cool. So that's that. Um, let's see. In non-Space 1999-related news, I just ordered the Time Slip Creations 132nd scale Viper Mark 7 e which is that weird variant that shows up in Razor and a couple episodes in Season 4 that's supposed to be more accurate to the full-scale mock-up, and it's more gray. Uh, and, yeah, I just, it's just I have to have the weird variants. I think it'd be pretty neat to build up. It's all resin. It's been out for a couple years, and I saw it on their Facebook page, so I don't know if they retooled it or just did another run of them, but it looks pretty cool, so that'll be fun to do up against a uh, regular Viper. I know I'll at least do a out-of-box review of that kit. Um, and for what I've seen of their stuff, they make some really good, really cool items. Like I said, Time Slip Creations. I'll put a link to their Facebook. I hope I remember all these things that I said in the video, and don't forget about them when editing later. But uh, uh, Yeah, and they also make a studio-scale Buck Rogers Starfighter, 124th scale. <laughs> Yes, I'll have to get one of those someday. And they're not, I mean, it's still expensive, but for a studio scale model that's really well done, 300 bucks, it's 290 something. It's not terrible. That's not, in, in terms of all these models and stuff, it's not too bad. So, and it's studio scale, so it's even better. But that is pretty much what I got going on here uh, for right now. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, check out the Facebook page for stuff I've been working on and have been too lazy to take videos of, like this guy over here and a couple 172nd scale Vipers and um, props, other ships, fun fun stuff. Just did, finally got the Battlestar Atlantia all wired up, so it's glorious in its zzzzness. But uh, yeah, anyway, well, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. And well, actually, you know, I'll, I'll see you on Moonbase Alpha. Anyway, take care and see you.